In this video, we're going to review how to round decimals. So let's just take a quick look at this chart right here. We see the ones place here in the middle, and then on either side of that is the tens or tenths. So you can see that this chart is very symmetrical, tens or tenths, and then if we continue out from there, we've got the hundreds and hundredths, and then the thousands and the thousands. Another way to remember the place values is if you're being asked to round to the nearest tenths, Think of the number 10, and the 10 has one zero in it, so the tenths place is one place value to the right of the decimal. Uh, same with the hundreds, if you think of the number 100, it has two zeros in it, so that would be two place values after the decimal, and then thousands has three zeros, and so then the thousands place is three place values after the decimal. And these decimals go on infinitely in both directions. We're just gonna be focusing on the tenths, hundreds, and thousandths today in this video. Let's get into some practice problems, some examples down here at the bottom. The nearest whole number refers to the ones place. So the strategy that I like to use is just put a little slash right there after the place value that I'm being asked to round to. So I'm I'm being asked to round to the nearest whole number. Five is in the whole number position in the ones place. So I'm gonna put a slash there. And that kind of tells me that we are eventually going to cut the rest of this number off, but I need to use this next number after the slash to inform me what to do with that five. So if this number after the slash is five or higher, then we are going to round up to the next number. So when we are rounding to the nearest whole number, we are trying to figure out is this number 5.67 closer to five or closer to six? And this six tells us that it is closer to the six because we are rounding this five up to the next number. So this is rounded to six. Okay, and we're just cutting the rest of that off. Now you can put the decimal and the zeros to show those place values, but you really don't need that with whole numbers or any extra zeros at the end of a decimal. Let's see what this one would look like if we round to the nearest whole number. So I'm gonna put my slash there after the ones place. Now we're looking at this zero here. Now, even though this nine is here and it's a higher number, that doesn't matter. What we're looking at is the very next digit. So the zero is gonna tell us what to do. It's not enough to bump us up to the next one's place. So we are going to cut the rest of this off and our number is 30. Let's see what happens when we are rounding to the nearest tenths place. The tenths place is one digit after the decimal point. So I'm gonna cut it off right there. This nine informs us to bump this up to the next number. Well, nine is the highest single digit number. So that means our next number is going to kind of have a domino effect on that next place value. So this nine bumps this nine up but then that bumps up the ones place because nine is the highest that we can go. We can't put a 10 here in the tenths place. So that affects the next digit. So our eight gets bumped up to a nine. Our nine turns into a zero. But again, like I said before, we don't really need to write the decimal and the zero if there are no other significant numbers after the decimal point. So this can just be written as nine. All right, now let's round this one to the nearest tenths place. We've got a seven here and a one here. That one tells us what to do. It's not enough to bump that seven up, so it's gonna stay a seven, 43.7. All right, now we're going to round to the nearest hundredths place. That's two digits after the decimal point, so I'm gonna cut it off right there. That four tells us what to do with the eight. The four is a four and lower number, right? So it's not enough, so that gets cut off there and we have 16.18. And then again, we've got, we're looking for the two digits after the decimal. So even though there are more digits after the, where we are cutting it off here, that doesn't matter. All we're concerned with is this six, and that six is gonna tell us to bump up the nine. But then again, just like we had in this problem, that nine is gonna have a domino effect on the next place value, in this case, the tenths place. So 
one is what we wind up with that one. The six, seven gets cut off. The nine would turn to a zero, but again, we don't need that extra zero at the end there. Notice that none of the numbers, even though we have multiple digits before whatever place value we're rounding to, none of those other numbers change unless we have a situation like this where we have that nine that gets moved up to the next number and it affects the next place value. Now let's take a look at the thousands. That's three place values after the decimal. So we're gonna cut it off there. That nine does tell us to move the two up to the next number. So we have three, five, seven point one six three. So again, none of these other numbers changed. The two is the only thing that changed to a three and then the nine got cut off at the end there. Anything after the thousands place gets cut off. All right, and then we've got three decimal places after the decimal there. And the five tells us what to do with the three. Five tells us to bump it up to a four. So we've got 4.264. So that was a quick review with some examples of rounding decimals. Typically, any problems that you will see will tell you what place value to round to. If it doesn't, I do have just a couple of notes to go over here. If you're working with money, then money is usually rounded to the nearest cent. So that means the nearest hundredths place because typically we have two decimal places after. And I know we talked a lot about not needing to write any extra zeros at the end. If you have, let's say that this, this uh, 43.716, that this was a money problem, in this case, I would write in that extra zero at the end because you always want to have two place values after the decimal when you're talking about money. If you're working with pi, if you're working with circles, usually pi itself is rounded to the nearest hundredths place. We use 3.14. Um, and so your answer could be rounded to the nearest hundredths place if you're not told specifically what to round to. If the question says round to the nearest whole number, then that is referring to the ones place. So anytime you see whole number, whole percent, whole dollar, you're rounding to the nearest ones place. Thanks so much for watching this rounding decimals video. This is part of my pre-algebra series. So if you are in a pre-algebra class, or if you're a teacher or a parent of a student who's in pre-algebra, check out my links in the description below. I have a ton of videos that go all over all the typical pre-algebra concepts that you would see in a full school year. So check those out. I also have some other links to some other skills that might be useful for you. And if you like this video, then I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. That really does help me to be able to continue making these math videos for you. And I'll see you next time.